Ooh, nine miles. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I consider myself to be an Ironman athlete. Uh, I excel at long distance endurance races. I've done four Ironman, including the Hawaii Ironman in 2004. Now, what Karen's going to do, and what's extraordinary, is she's going to get in the water and she's going to go nine miles at a steady pace. Uh, I've swam with Karen before and what she does is she just focuses in on the task at hand and uh, once she gets going, there's no stopping her. She goes and goes and goes. What Karen is doing swimming the width of Tahoe is historic in its own way. There's only been a handful of people swim the width of Tahoe since the early 20s. When you swim six miles in open water, there's a lot of experts that talk about that's equivalent to a marathon and running as far as the physiology, what's going on in the body. So she'll be doing something that uh, it will be very challenging, not just to being in Lake Tahoe, but just the physiology of swimming uh, that distance. She'll be doing over uh, almost two marathons, a marathon and a half. Most of the time you would see swims in mid-July to end of August. So, so what Karen is doing in the end of September is a unique challenge all on its own. There is a world of difference between 55 degrees and 65 degrees. Tahoe is un very unforgiving under 60. I've had experience in Tahoe under 60 for many hours. It is a much tougher swim than swimming at 62 to 65. So what she is doing is, is very historic and only a handful of folks have ever even thought about doing. And many people have not completed. I am feeling a little bit nervous about the big day, um, about starting the dark. Um, I think basically the hardest part is um, the long training sessions I've been, been doing, swimming constantly and hard. It feels like not, I'm not taking any breaks when I swim. I just want to keep on swimming. Yeah, sometimes I feel like whenever I'm out in the lake or whatever, I feel like I'm swimming for like 100 years. Will I ever stop, you know? When is the actual point of me stopping? <laughs> When I hit the water that dark, um, I was kind of um, afraid a little bit when I first came in the water. Just that first, um, the first 45 minutes in the dark, when I had a glow stick in my head, my cap, I was kind of scared because I didn't, didn't know which direction I was going. Okay. I hadn't um, really experienced like pure blackness before. <laughs> so I was thinking, how would I, you know, navigate in the dark? Um, how would I follow Ken? The psychological aspect of any kind of swim like this is it's, it's truly lonely. And you, you have got to go through your mind and sort out uh, any fears you may have, any types of uh, intrepidation or you, resistance or those types of things you feel like you cannot do. You've got to get that out of your mind fairly soon. Last two weeks, the water was uh, 65 to 67. But with all the wind that came in last week, it turns the water over and the colder water below comes up. That's cold water. I knew Ken would get in the water without a wetsuit, although uh, I know he was cold. He, and he lasted two hours in that water. That's incredible. And we spent a lot of time picking our points for the crossing. And so we studied those landmarks. We had it all down, but we had uh, trouble with them uh, at the beginning of the swim. Uh, going over, we had a heck of a time trying to find Dead Man Point in the dark, even with uh, searchlights and that kind of thing, uh, we were confused. Uh, fortunately, one of the boats had GPS, and that was the one who found it first and was able to guide the rest of us uh, to the point where we were gonna start. And then as we started out, the one who's actually navigating the swimmers is the kayak. And um, I thought our lead swimmer, Ken Harmon, was going to be navigating. And so we had some confusion there. You see the orange lights in the hillside? You're aiming left of those. Oh, OK. 
It's a good thing we had this talk. I know. Third time always works. The two lights in the hill, right? Yeah, aim left of them. Within 20 minutes, we had it all sorted out, and we had um, my brother Bill locked on uh, the landmark uh, very close. And within a half hour after that, we, we had exactly the point we wanted. Yeah, one interesting phenomenon was uh, the people that Karen swam with. And when she's done this, uh, she has gained a lot of respect of other swimmers. And it's happened in every venue wherever she's gone. Um, Ken Harmon, who was a great supporter of all this, and is, we were just fortunate that we were able to hook up on him and gain his advice. Uh, he, he was in the boat with me between his swims, and he said he wouldn't have believed it if he didn't see it. He, hit, he heard what we were saying, but he really didn't believe it until he saw it. That's really the reaction that we've had over and over and over. The same thing happened in San Francisco, the same thing happened in England, uh, which in that case it was a relay team. And uh, those people, uh, they tell some interesting stories about uh, what they went through in the relationship with Karen. In the beginning, it was kind of a romantic story, you know, uh, some, uh, something that caught them up and they signed up for before they had really thought it through and all of the um, personal hardships for them in terms of f uh, finances and time for the travel and all that kind of thing and being away from their families. And then uh, realizing uh, how great a swimmer Karen is and, and seeing her uh, do her part. Um, and, and there's a lot of people who would never be able to do, you know, uh, be a member of a, a relay team across the English Channel. That's no small matter either. But everywhere she's been, there's been those kinds of experiences with blue chip swimmers, um, very accomplished swimmers, usually they're uh, master swimmers, who have given a, a lot of respect to Karen once they've seen what she can do. You know, I really felt confident in myself to do it. Um, I was really thankful and glad. I had pacers in the water like Ken and my Uncle Greg and Phil Summers and Emma. Um, I was following them for a while. Well, without them being in there, without their help and support, I wouldn't have made that swim. You know, I was a little worried early on because she doesn't give you a lot of signs of, um, of how she's doing. I mean, she's, she's just a little warrior. She puts her head down and does it. And so it was really hard to tell um, how, you know, how strong she was or, or you, know, what, you know, what she was doing with the, with the swim. And, and so my only way of telling was when she was uh, eating and I could get up close to the kayak and, and kind of get an idea of, of um, you know her mood, and, and she was just kind of talking with Bill, and and uh, seemed to be, you know, kind of upbeat and just uh, focused on the task at hand. And and you know, about an hour or two into it, when we got the kayak at a good distance from her, uh, that she could see, um, she was kind of following the pacers. But when we got her to follow the kayak, got her speed really picked up, and she started uh, she started cruising right in the middle there. So, um, I think after getting by the the early, you know, kind of cold, the dark, and the disorientation, once she got a good mark to go after, uh, her speed really picked up. Well, I went through a lot of emotion. Part of it is just nerves and um, knowing that logistically there's a lot of things that have to come together. And when that is the case, there, that also means a lot of things can go wrong. And as we went through the swim and we could see how the day was turning out and that they were just really ideal conditions, um, I felt uh, better as the day went on. Selecting the 25th, I would like to know whose lucky number is the 25th for the Gaffney family because I don't know how they came up with the 25th, uh, but obviously there's got to be a story or they need to create one because it's a fabulous day, yeah. We're 
we're inside of four miles. Uh, we're, our time is amazing. The water doesn't get any better than this. Everything is just absolutely perfect. So she's about two and a half hours away is what I would say, which would bring her in at about uh, between five and a half and six hours. Uh, it's better than what we were planning for. So if the rest of this goes um, as well as this, it has so far, uh, we're, this would be a great day. It's already a great day. She loves this, she feeds off of it, she understands exactly um, the importance, and she loves um, uh, events, you know, uh, this is like a vacation to her, and she's hiring a kite. She's probably getting really excited about uh, getting this thing accomplished and, and uh, finishing it up, because, uh, you know, her face is cold, her hands are cold, her feet are cold, and uh, it's quite an accomplishment, so I'm sure she's getting more and more excited about it. After talking with Karen and seeing what she's achieved in, you know, her 30 years, I'm really impressed. It means a lot for our family, for Finley, that we have such a great advocate and we're just proud to have her as part of our community. And um, it's been really a positive experience for our family and gives us a lot of hope for the future. I'm really, you know, ready for Finley to do some of those things too. I almost had doubts, but I didn't because I knew that I was going to finish. Because once I saw Greg and Ken be sure, they were looking back to see where I was, and I was almost there. When she was coming up to the shore, uh, I was actually overcome with emotion because I'd been watching her the whole way, and thoughts go through your head of, you know, wow, I can't believe she's going to do this, and, you know, I think she's going to do it, I think she's going to do it. And then you get to two miles and one mile, and you're like, oh, my God, she is going to do it. I was getting really close. Um, I really picked up my speed towards the end. I saw him getting out of his kayak and still waiting out the water until I got there. That was the biggest moment of my entire life when I gave Billy a great, great big hug on the beach. How are you feeling, Karen? Good day. How cold was it? Uh, pretty cold. I think that I normally tell people that once people follow my first steps and see what I have done swimming wise, they can do the exact same thing too. And they really put their hearts to it and stick to it and think positive about it. You know, the old stereotypes of people with Down syndrome being, um, you know, incapable and, you know, not active. I mean, she's broken all those stereotypes. She works out more than most people and she has her own foundation. She's just a really accomplished woman. And I think that, that it will make people think that our children can achieve the same thing. People are definitely gonna look at people with Down syndrome differently after this. I mean, this is a great accomplishment for any woman, whether you have Down syndrome or not. When Finley was born two years ago, I don't think I envisioned this kind of thing for him, but now I think anything's possible. 